Hi, and welcome to this CSS Hero tutorial all about the CSS Hero Inspector Pro. Now, if you don't have this installed on your site yet, go to CSS Heroes dashboard and download it, and you're gonna to want to install it as a plugin. It's a zip file, and so you're gonna to wanna to add new and then upload it as a plugin. And as soon as you activate it, you of course need to have CSS Hero, but what you'll see here is that we have an extra button, and when we click that button, we get to see the actual code that we had made before uh, within CSS Hero, kind of how we made the style here. Now we see the code for that exact thing. So if I delete this, you can see, oh, it's gone, right? So putting it back, you can see that this is all the code that kind of goes into uh, making that happen. Now, right off the bat, you can see on the left side, it says all devices, iPad landscape, iPad portrait, iPhone landscape, and iPhone portrait. These are uh, media queries basically showing us the different sizes uh, that we can possibly view our content. Obviously there's there's more sizes than just this, but it really helps us kind of get a get a good idea of you know certain things that happen. You can see hello world right here. It fits just fine, but at this width, it pushes to two lines. So it's really, really helpful because it's kind of helping us kind of write specific code for specific uh, sizes of screens, which is super important in today's world when not everybody's on a desktop. In fact, most, most people and more people than ever uh, use their phones uh, as their main, even sometimes their main computer, honestly. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this, uh, as opposed to being along the bottom here, I'm actually gonna click these three dots right here and then I'm gonna say, let's put it over to the left side here. That way I'll be able to kind of see this, this area a little bit better. But specifically for this instance of, of this hello world being on two lines, I have an issue with that, but I only have an issue with that when it is uh, this small of a width. When it's uh, you know iPad landscape width, I got plenty of room. I'm fine with it there. But when it's smaller, like this, it pushes to two lines and I don't like that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna click select right here. And then as I roll over different parts of the screen, you can see that stuff popping up. It's showing me what I'm selecting. Okay, so we're gonna be working here, but just for a second, let's just roll down and you can see what happens. When I, uh, when I select this one, you can see that where it says recent comments below, it says where it says recent comments, these two also turn green. That's telling me, hey, if you if you click right here, then that's also going to change for these and these, okay? And then uh, right here, actually, if I roll over just the text part, not the uh, not the link part, but just the text part of this specific area, you can see up here, it took that whole line out, which is good because that means if I if I choose this instead of this, then I'm going to be making sure that I get the entirety of the line and not just the links. Okay, so coming up here, we can see uh, this is what I this is what I want to edit right now. So I click that, and all of a sudden it pushes this data over here to my CSS. So primary post entry title and then a, which is link, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start typing right here font and you can see it automatically populates with all the different possibilities of what I could what I could uh, code differently here this is really really helpful because you know it takes a long time to kind of know what to aim for but when you have these it's kind of like I'm presented like a menu almost of what would you like to change it it takes a lot of the time and fuss out of coding. Okay, so as I do font size, whatever, and you can see that this is selected font size. Obviously, I can select all these different ones, but if I just press enter, it fills it out for me. So this also saves time if I'm typing font s. I don't even need to type the whole thing. Obviously, it's only a few more letters, but you know, that saves you a lot of time if you can just press enter and it'll fill it'll fill it out for you. That's really nice cuz anything that saves time is a help to us. Okay, so I'm going to do font size Let's guess 20 pixels. Oh, that's way too small. Now, we can obviously just keep trying different things like here, 30, 40, 50, 60, etc. But there's something that's really fun too, and these are these are keyboard shortcuts. I'm gonna click this right here, and up pops these available commands. You can see this, look at this, how it says arrow up is increase number plus one, and arrow down is decrease number minus one. So let me close this and go back here. I'm just going to click right here where it says 30 and I press up arrow 
you can see what happens. As opposed to me having to guess what uh, what number and kind of just type it in and press enter, type it in, press enter, or even just as I change it actually. As I change it, it just it it populates immediately. Uh, but I could just use the arrows. I could just get it perfectly right, just hold the arrows. Or if I want to hold shift, then it goes up and down by 10. So these fun little shortcuts, they just take the time off as you get to use the software, get to learn the software. It just takes time off and anything that takes time off is a friend for us. Okay, so I'm going to say 55, that's fine. And now I'm going to go down here and let's say, okay, so I'm on iPhone portrait. So obviously this is a very, very small screen. Okay, I'm going to say, how about this? Let me try to center these. Okay, so recent posts, recent comments, archives, etc. And before I actually do it, remember again, when I roll over part of whatever I'm selecting, it immediately shows me what else it's going to be selecting. This is really, really helpful because sometimes in the case of uh, this specifically right here, when I roll over this Hello World link, you can see that where it says on down here, on isn't selected when I roll over Hello World. But if I'm just to the side here, not on the link, but just to the side of the link, you can see that it takes out that entire line. It selects the, the links and it selects the text. So be very careful when you're trying to select something because just moving it over a tiny bit will take the whole line and affect all the, the size of, you know, you could change the font size of the entire line. Or if you don't do that, then you might just be changing the font size of the link in which case the font size would get bigger or smaller here for the link, but then this on, which isn't a link, it's just text, wouldn't change at all. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to click Hello World right here, and keep in mind I'm not selecting this because you can see the green that's showing up is not selecting that on word. So I click this, and then I say, come over here, font-size, I don't even need to type the whole thing because I can just press Enter, and it fills it up for me. 30 pixels. And you can see that this got bigger, but the on didn't get bigger. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. It just, I selected the wrong thing, but CSS Hero Inspector Pro is helping me here because it's telling me when I roll over something by selecting it in green, what it's selecting. Okay, so if I come down here and I select on instead, I, I put my, my mouse over the word on, that's selecting that whole entire line, the entirety of the line, as opposed to just the link. Or if I'm up here rolling on the link, if I just go over slightly to the side, the software is smart enough to realize, hey, you want to select the entire line and not just the links on that line. Okay, so let me click this now. And now when I do font size, 30 pixels, now it brings everything with it. Okay, so the on, which is just a word, is also big as well as the link. Okay, great. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that, in fact, I'm actually going to use my arrow down because I don't want it to be super big, but I want it to be a little bit bigger. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to center these, uh, where it says recent posts, recent comments, archives. I'm going to center these guys. So again, I'm rolling on it and I'm looking at, okay, is it selecting the right thing? It says five on this page. If you can see that, it's really kind of small text, but uh, it works on my screen. Five on this page. So it's showing me, hey, I'm going to select all of these things, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want. I click. It writes the code for me over here. And in fact, it gives me a really, really nice um, a nice comment here telling me what it is as well, which is really, really helpful. And then I'm going to say, let me change the font size a little bit bigger. And then, you know what? That's too big. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to use my arrows up and down and get it just the right size. Let's say that's that's looking good. And then I'm going to say text align. Again, it's filling it out for me. Okay, so as I start typing, look at all these different things we can adjust. Text transform, text wrap, text overflow, text outline, text justify, blah, blah, blah. It's showing, it's kind of giving you that view into all these different things you can change instead of you being blind and saying, gosh, I don't even know what I can do and having to Google it. You can just start typing. And it's going to present to you in this in this easy menu what you uh, what it thinks you're typing out, and it's already it's already kind of chosen text align. So if I if I press enter right now, it writes out text align for me. 
and I'm just gonna make that look nice. Okay, so text align, and then center, and bam, here we go. Now keep in mind, this is just changing uh, the looks of this for this specific width. If I go up to iPhone, uh, iPhone landscape, it's this text is small again, right? Just for this specific width, will it change this uh, this code? And that's what we're doing here with this this at media screen and max width is 480 pixels. Okay, so uh, one one other thing I kind of want to bring to your attention is that we're kind of up and down this this uh, this menu right here. First, it's all devices, then it's iPad landscape, then iPad portrait iPhone landscape and then iPhone portrait. One thing I don't want you to get caught off guard with iPhone landscape particularly, you're seeing that this looks kind of long. You're seeing this looks kind of like an iPhone shape, but here's the here's the thing. What it's doing is it's resizing based on width. So imagine that you have your iPhone longwise, horizontally long, right? So the the width is super super long and the height is small because you have it turned to the side in landscape mode. So you won't necessarily see all this other stuff before you scroll, but it's helping you out and it's letting you see more than that just so you can kind of edit easier as opposed to kind of cutting off the screen right here to make it look more like an iPhone in landscape. It's letting you see the entirety of the screen, okay? So it's, it's changing the screen based on the width and it's saying, hey, when we change the width, certain things change and you wanna make sure that you can go in and choose something like iPhone portrait and say, hmm, Okay, we want that hello world to be a little bit smaller for this specific width or hmm, we want this to be centered for this specific width or hmm, we want this text to be a little bit bigger for this width. Okay, so going through all these different things, you can kind of get a really, really good view quickly as to how your site is going to change when it's presented on different devices, obviously from iPad landscape with to iPad portrait, you can see that sidebar disappears. Okay, so stuff like that is really, really important when you're trying to figure out how, how are people gonna see my site. If you have something really, really important in the sidebar here, and then somebody views it on an iPhone, it's gone, right? People are gonna have to scroll down. If this is a long post, obviously this is a super short post, but if this is a long post, then people are gonna have to scroll all the way down to get that side, get access to that sidebar. Um, versus if you're on you know, iPad landscape and then boom, it's right there at the top to the side of the content as opposed to beneath the content. One thing that's really helpful too is we have something called syntax check. Okay, so let me open back up the iPhone portrait where we were doing the coding for, uh, for changing the size of this and centering that and changing the size of that. If I click syntax check, this is helping me because it's looking at my code and it's saying, hey, there might be an issue with something here. There might be a problem. Okay, so let me mess it up a little bit. Instead of uh, typing this whole thing out and saying pixels, I just did 20p. It's supposed to be 20px. And then for each line, you want to add a semicolon. But let's say that I just, for some reason, you know, I type just 20p. I forget the x and I forget the semicolon and I walk away. It's highlighting this for me right away, okay? It's saying unexpected token 20p at line 12. This is helpful because otherwise your site's gonna break, you're not gonna know why, but this is giving you really helpful tips. Now, not everything is gonna break your site. Not everything is gonna take your site down or make, it, make certain weird things happen. Um, and usually with CSS, your site won't crash, but certain things might happen in weird ways and you won't really know why. But this is great because it, it really highlights what's going on here. And I want you to understand that not all of this is stuff you need to pay attention to, but at least it's a help. It's an extra pair of eyes on your code. When you're sitting there with lines of code, it's easy to forget one small thing. All, the, all we need here is an X. That's all we need. But it's gonna break your code if you forget just one small thing. So that's what's really, really helpful with this syntax check, just a quick on, just quick check it on, and you're good to go. And then um, this red is stuff you really, really need to take care of. This, these are errors, okay? Now up here is yellow. So this is a warning. So this doesn't mean that it, you necessarily need to change it. And this is saying, hey, don't use IDs in selectors. That's this guy right here, this hashtag. IDs are meant to be used only once. 
So typically, you won't want to highlight and change code for just one tiny little area. Usually, because there's repeating elements in your site, you want to be able to kind of change them site-wide. So it's warning you and saying, hey, you're focusing on changing the code for, for this ID, which means you're only looking at this one tiny little area of your entire site. Are you sure that you only want to change the code for this just this one area and not other things that look like it? You're not trying to change um, you know, twins of this thing. You're just trying to change this one thing. And so you don't necessarily need to pay attention to that. Now, as you as you go through your site, you look at different pages. If you notice that that the code that you've changed doesn't work for other pages, that's when you're really going to start to want to pay attention to these warnings. It's a helpful hand, um, but it's not going to give you um, an error when it's just a warning. Okay. Let me see here. So back down here again, if I just type something like 20p, it knows right away that it's an error and it's giving me red as opposed to this yellow, which is just a warning. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope this was helpful to you um, and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.